Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Claudio, I work at IBM, and I'm gonna talk about the VTPM we have developed for the SVSM. You know, SVSM, that firmware that runs in, you know, confidential VMs, AMD, now Intel. Um, so we're gonna talk mostly about uh, testation with the testation persistent storage. First, I'm gonna give a, a quick development status, um, and then we'll, I'll bring up some use cases and what those use cases uh, requires and how they work quickly. And at the end, I'll, I'll bring up some uh, points, some questions, but at the end, I'll, I'll give you a summary. We're gonna give you a summary of the, the, all the questions. So the SVSM, uh, currently it has, it, it, it doesn't load or persist any, any information uh, that means the VTPM cannot have its own state. We need to generate it on, on every boot. So the, the, the VTPM is manufactured on every boot, so the seeds, we have new EKs, a new EK on, the, on every boot. But that at least allows us to use the TPM tools, so we can, from user space, we can create an EK, we can use it uh, for, for some use cases. There is some limitation. Some of the use cases we, we've been discussing uh, are, the first one is remote attestation, do a, a, a TPM-based remote attestation. And for that we need to, we, we have to attest the, 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 confidential, the confidential virtual machine, the VTPM, um, attest its states and it's also its identity, so EK and also PCRs. Uh, for, for AMD, we have that SVSM attest service that, that can also help to associate a VTPM with a certain um, uh, EK. Um, but if we want to do TPM-based remote attestation and we want to have our, um, persistent storage, we need, to do some, we need to do injection, we need to inject the, the state, we need to do early attestation because when we inject the state, we need to make sure that we're injecting in the same, the right um, VTPM, confidential virtual machine. And we also probably need to do some, to extend the, some PCRs with some information uh, such as, I don't know, uh, it might be redundant, but launch, me launch measurement, or any key that we load, what identity. Another use case is secure boot. Um, so. Only, uh, I think we already know what secure boot means. Only firmware that is authorized can be executed by the DB database. Uh, but those keys, the secure boot keys, needs to be loaded. Uh, they need to be injected. Um, and then OVMF can take those keys. And here we have some similar requirements. Uh, the, the secure boot keys need to be injected and we also need to do some early attestation. Uh, at the SSM level, and we also need persistent storage to store, to store those keys. And the last use case is a TPM based disk encryption, so basically LUX. Um, it, it can, it, the idea is that it can rely on, on a key that is sealed in the TPM, but that, for that, um, the key needs to be sealed uh, to the, and, and that needs to be loaded into the Okay, these are the use cases. Um, Stefano, you, go, you talk about the persistent state, some of the persistent state. Yes, so um, as Claudio mentioned, uh, we are, I mean, uh, our goal is to have some kind, to, uh, to provide to, to the SVSM services some kind of, um, some way to persist in the state across reboot. So, uh, Essentially, we want to enable the persistent VTPM and UFI storage. And for the TPM, we want to preserve the TPM identity for the use cases, the counters, storage across reboots in order to um, to support, I mean, to, to allow the guest to ask to do measure boot and, for example, unlock the disk with, um, with the TPM, uh, sealing the key with the TPM. So essentially, uh, one of the goal is to have the guest to ask to I mean that the, the our distro can work easily with the our with the TPM provided by SVSM like it was a real TPM. 
And another, another uh, use case that also Claudio mentioned is to um, allow SVSM to provide um, a storage service to, that OVMF can use for, uh, secu for a configurable secure boot. So in this way, the distro can update uh, secure boot keys or can do some kind of, can add new keys or do some kind of revocation. And this, uh, these things brings, of course, several change, uh, challenges that we need to solve in SVSM to, to support this storage. So the first thing is the, um, we need some kind of device uh, where to store the state. So it could be a simple NVRAM or um, a Vertio block device that our colleague is uh, working on or some other kind of hypervisor specific device. So the idea is to build a really a tiny storage layer where we can plug in uh, the, the driver of the device. On top of the layer, on top of the storage layer, we need to essentially allow the services to use its own space. So we can do a simple partitioning of the, um, of the storage, uh, but if, uh, I mean, uh, if we have just a couple of services, it should be fine. Otherwise, we, we maybe we need to think about some kind of uh, very simple file system. And then uh, we need to provide uh, integrity, so uh, some kind of mechanism that SVSM can use to check if the state is not, uh, I mean, is, is in a good shape that the host doesn't change anything. And of course, we need to encrypt that this state because this state will be stored in a file into the host, so it needs to be encrypted. Uh, also, if it is encrypted, uh, as, as I mentioned, the state is in, stored into, this, uh, into the um, host file system, for example. So the host can still do some kind of attacks. And the two main attacks are the rollback. Uh, essentially, uh, SV, uh, the host can copy an old state and attach it to the, to the VM on next boots. In this way, yeah. When you say encryption, um, where do you get your encryption key from? Uh, we will talk in the next slide. So essentially, uh, we will do some. We will do an attestation. To whom? To receive the. You're putting a network stack into SVSM. No, we will use a proxy. What is, what uh, this proxy? is a slide. So essentially, uh, SVSM will talk with uh, an application that will run into the host. We will have a communication channel between SVSM and the proxy. We will be very, I don't know, simple, like a serial port or Virtio VSOC device. And then the proxy, we will talk with the remote attestation server. And the protocol that we will define, of course, need to be aware that this is a clear many the middle. So I'm sure you do just to TLS in between, but uh. so you're effectively giving this like a shortcut network connection ahead of the boot to be able to talk to a remote right. station server. Yeah. So that you can then get yourself out of the... Exactly. So uh, the remote server can check that uh, SVSM, I mean, that the expected software is running on a genuine hardware. SVSM, of course, also need to generate some kind of key uh, to receive the secret. So that key will be part of also, also of the attestation report. So it will be signed by with the attestation report some kind of, I mean, like an hash or something that allow the, um, the, the, the remote server to check if the key are really generated by SVSM and not by the, uh, the host, for example. Yeah. Where do you, so since you're making a VTPM, where do you store the private key for its own attestation towards the, the Linux OS? The key of? the private key for the attestation of the VTPM itself? I mean, the, the private key of, I mean, do you, do you mean the key, for example, of the VTPM? Yes. It One, will be- There's many keys, in, but like the, specifically yeah, the, entire the shared state will be key. stored into, in, uh, okay. The entire state will be stored encrypted into the SVSM state. So SVSM state will- uh, Well, no, it, I don't mean dynamic state. I mean like the static, like normally in a TPM, it would be flashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That exactly. state is static. Is a file into SVSM, the host? You boot no, SVSM. No, SVSM gets the, the the data blob. The data blob contains the EK, 
and then it boots the VTPM based on that EK. Yeah. Or oh, the EK is in the... It's in the block. It's in the block. It's oh, here okay. in the, into this persistent state, which would be unlocked only after the attestation. So initially, when, when it boots, as we assume, will not have any TPM, and will manufacture, I mean, not manufacture, will load its state after the attestation, when they receive the key back. So if, if I'm a confidential guest, how... Oh, how do I trust the attestation server? How do I test that the attestation server? I mean, the, 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 the attestation server will be provided by the, the owner of the VM, so need oh, to be. Oh, okay. There's, oh, wow. there's, there's one tiny caveat in that picture, um, at least when I try to apply this to EC2. Um, our hypervisor doesn't have network access. I, I couldn't even do a proxy if I wanted. So the, the only other Correct. And at that point, like, is, is putting a network driver in there significantly worse, at least network driver with trivial protocols, right? I'm not talking about, like, super complicated. Is that significantly worse than requiring, or than, than putting in, like, VSOC and that additional proxy on the outside? So all the SVSM needs is actually some kind of, so, some kind of channel, and the channel does not need to go to the hypervisor. It can also go to... Yeah. The nitro card, right? And the nitro card can, can, can run the proxy or whatever, or do, do the proxying. Yeah, essentially the channel will be so, a, like a VSOC, and then you can. So I don't see us implementing a network stack and a, and a network driver in the SVSM. That's, I think, that's a bit too, too much complexity. That was a whole idea, like, you didn't want to put it Yeah. So. We had discussed this, like, yeah. uh, initially the networking state, should we go in the SVSM? And the idea was this would turn out to be too complicated, keep SVSM small, and that's the idea of proxy. So we did, ourselves didn't want the networking stack or at least networking PC in the SVSM. So I think I like that idea, that take the proxy and if you can somehow more DPU stuff or networking card stuff you're doing and just talk through that to solve this problem. There's another downside to this, though, which is that it creates some assumptions about what the host is doing, right? If you have this proxy inside of the guest, um, yeah, one problem is you might not even have access to the network from the hypervisor, but also you're assuming that this host is going to know something about this proxy, and we'll have to have some agreement. If you're using this firmware on different cloud providers, they're all going to have this thing. Uh, so hopefully we'll all agree on that today, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> be wise to like standardize like a register interface or a PCI function or something that did what you're asking for, or at least a reference for it. And then everybody can say, how do I want to implement this weird PCI function? Like, do I want to do it I in mean, my hypervisor? Do I want to do it in my DPU? Whatever. But at least people understand what you're asking them of. Yeah, but maybe instead of, I mean, uh, standardize a device, we can just standardize a protocol, and then you can... Well, the device is more, for people building hypervisor, uh, okay. it's more concrete, right, in their mind. It, it is definitely easier if, if we if we it on the PCI layer than on, on, a, on a virtual level. One example, I could not, I, I could literally, I wouldn't be able to implement VirtIO VSOC in my DPU. It's just technically impossible. Um, in your what? In my... Nitro card in the, in the separate card. I mean, but can you implement something that, I don't know, pass packet or stuff like we, that? We couldn't do many things. It's just VirtIO VSOC is one of the ones I couldn't because okay. it <laughs> just has a couple of requirements. I, guess, that it I mean, initially broken. what we are using now in the proof of competence is just the serial port. So, Serial port is probably even worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> either way, um, what scares you about the network stack is most likely the TCP part, right? Right. And because TLS and already is something you HTTP need to put in. On top and well, HTTP is trivial of all things, right? But I mean, whatever the, the middle protocol is, you don't care. SVSM doesn't have to do that. SVSM doesn't have to do TLS, right? In in within the proxy model, it doesn't. Yeah. If you if you didn't have a proxy, the only reason you want the proxy is because you don't want to implement a right. network driver. You don't want to implement a um, TCP a stack. TCP stack. Right. And you don't want to implement an HTTP stack. Or but that's TLS. presuming. You no, no, you will implement TLS. No. Yes, you have to implement TLS. Yeah. No, using there's, using there's, using you, no, you, you must not use the proxy 
for that because you cannot trust what the other side is. And so you need to have some TLS to the to the That's with the attestation thing. The, the, a TPM attestation protocol provides trust and encryption already. You don't have a TPM attestation protocol at that point because you, that just doesn't exist. You do, right? That's, that's the whole plan. You don't want the hypervisor to know what the plain text is anyway. The, the so hypervisor is, it must yeah, be out so of the picture. You don't, yeah. it needs to be encrypted. So it encrypted. needs to be encrypted. So. It, it, if yeah, we didn't it could have be TLS or something else, but you yeah, need to do a TLS-like connection, which means the only thing you're like you and, and you d still need to implement a device driver for VSOC for serial port for whatever. So right. If you consider complexity of a simple network device driver, I'm not talking about like a super complicated one, right? Like a simple tiny network driver compared to um, a VDI VSOC driver, it doesn't actually make that, that much of, of a difference. So it yeah, doesn't. I which mean, compared to a serial port, a bit. Well, the serial port is easier, but again, serial ports have their own caveats. Um, which means the only thing you're really skipping with a proxy is, is the GCP stack. What if you just didn't use TCP? What if you just made that protocol be UDP-based, you do a bit of beep bouncing and... I mean, but can we solve all of these things you don't into need a proxy. some... I mean, into the hypervisor, for example. It, the device that you are mentioned can do no, all of these things? No, because I don't have the other side. It doesn't exist for me. I don't have that other end. My, my hypervisor has no network access. My Nitro card has no network access. The only thing that has network access, no, no, the Nitro card itself, the thing that, you would, that I would terminate this particular device in, does not have network access. The only thing that has network access is the tiny piece of code on, the on a special Nitro card, not even necessarily the one that you would talk to here, on a special Nitro card that only, whose only function is to implement my network function. Yeah, what we this, can do is simply like, uh, doesn't if for for example for our use case have a serial driver for your your use case whatever you want it's just give me a message I, give me I, I have a question Ahem. you don't have what? the microphone <laughs> why are we prescribing all of the cloud specific bits it seems like this is going to be controversial universally how we handle these things like it seems like what we need is, I don't know, uh, a persistent state API, a key brokery API. I don't know, I'm being very vague here, but like do those things in kind of a pluggable way and then let Amazon figure out what it's doing and let everyone else figure out what they're doing. And that, for example, for me, Google figure out what it's doing because it's probably also gonna be weird for us. And so I, I think we shouldn't be debating the, the nitty gritty details of each cloud provider because all of us are gonna have weirdness that's mostly my thought here. Yeah. Yeah. Be as flexible and as possible and be as little prescriptive as possible, except please make any, please make sure that that HTTP, HTTPS connection must work over IPv6. Make your test cases fail if it only works with legacy IP. Do not allow providers not to provide IPv6. I mean, the, the idea of the proxy is exactly that, that anyone can implement whatever yeah. they want there. But all the test suites, everything should fail if it only works on legacy IP. Don't <laughs> let people do that. So, uh, thank you. We are actually need to continue moving, but...